Well, happy Monday, everyone. I decided to do a live this evening, kind of impromptu. As a matter of fact, I don't even know exactly how this project's going to turn out, but I uh, die cut some pieces from a brand new die set that I wanted to show you. And then also because the live kind of went so wonky, um, the last time I was on, uh, I decided that I needed to come back on here and repeat a couple of those. So if you'll bear with me, I would just like to share, find where I'm going live on my page and share that. So maybe some people can jump on here and join me. Okay, I got a couple people with me. Let me know who we are and um, say hi to me. Thank you for joining me tonight. I'm just getting started and trying to see where I'm going live so I can share that out. Maybe we can have more people join us. And as usual, I have such trouble finding that on my page. Oh, there it is. There we go. Okay. Let's see if I can get that up. Hi, Jen. Thanks for joining me tonight. I have a fun project for you. I think you're going to like it. Yay, Jenny from high school. That's so fun. Okay, let's see. Um... Where do, oh, there's the share button. One of these days, I am going to get this quickly. Mm, share to group, share to, share to, okay. Apparently, I still can't do it. All right, not going to be able to share right now, but hey, if you guys um, can share this out as well, I would greatly appreciate it. And if you like what you see, then um, give me a thumbs up because those are free. All right, so, oh, thanks, Jen. Isn't that pretty? Oh, Jenny. So I got some sound going on over here. I don't want to hear that. All right, so did I end my video? No, there we go. Okay, so what I have planned tonight is kind of, well, like I said, it was impromptu. And I don't know exactly where I'm going with this, but I didn't want to just repeat the same cards that I did last time. I wanted to do something new, but stick with the same theme, which was coloring die cuts, okay? So first of all, I want to share with you this suite. Um, it's called Ornate Gardens Suite. And these are the dies, the ornate dies. And so there's these borders, lots of borders, and then a few flowers. So I'm using this border right here. And then I punched out some extra flowers. And here are the stamp sets. There's actually another, I think there's another die set that goes with this and I didn't grab it, um, but there are two stamp sets and um, one is rubber and one is photopolymer so that you can line these up together. They're designed to work together. I'm probably just going to use one of those small little greetings. And then here are some, thanks everybody. Here are some cards that I made with them. I suppose I could go like this. So I did a white embossing of that large flower image and then colored in with my, with just inks um, from the ink pads. Um, it's kind of the same technique that I'm gonna show later tonight, um, but I did it inside a white embossed outline with um, ink pads. And then this one is colored. Oh, there, that's those. I didn't show you that die set. I should probably grab that before we're off. Isn't that stunning? Oh. And those faceted gold dots go with the set as well in the suite. So I did a little bit of emboss, dry embossing with the Scuttles texture and then fussy cut this out after I was done. And I don't know if you noticed, but um, I didn't cut in here. I just colored that in with black. So that's a tip when you're cutting things out and you're replacing it on a color. You could just use the matching color or the matching uh, marker to, to uh, color in the background so you don't have to cut out every little space. And then um, I used uh, Stampin' Blends on this one. 
And then here is a very simple one. So I just stamped the, um, the um, flower image in the corner, not using the whole image. And then right immediately, I think I used Melon Mambo. Yeah, that's Melon Mambo. Um, immediately I used my Wink of Stella. So it kind of moves the color around. And so those look like they've been slightly colored in and they haven't. But because I used the Wink of Stella immediately, it picks up the co wet, the color that's not quite dry and moves it around for you. And um, let's see, I think those are from the something peacock um, gemstones that are going to be discontinued. This dye is also going to be discontinued. And right now, the flourishing, the flourishing dyes set. All right, so let's get started on the card that I want to make tonight. So kind of saw some things earlier today that are my inspiration. And so what I saw was a strip of paper. I think it was paper. I, I didn't take that careful of a look. I want to use snail for this. And um, hi, Marsha. Thanks for joining. So, oh, wait. I'm showing you the paper. I need to show you the paper. And then I need to share with you um, how I chose my colors for tonight. So this color is terracotta tile, which is one of our end colors from last year, but it's sticking around again this year. But you gotta see this paper. This paper, oh my goodness. It's called Ornate Garden Specialty Designer Series Paper. And so it has that coordinating image the daisy image, and then there's little flowers. You'll recognize the shapes of those with the dyes that I'm using tonight. And then that sweet one, isn't that just so precious? Oh, love that. And that's one of the new in colors, Bumblebee, which you'll hopefully be seeing very soon. And then another cluster of the daisies. And let me turn this over and show you the other side. Oh, isn't that fun? This is this is why it's called Specialty Designer Series Papers. So this is gold embossed. And so, of course, you can color those images in or you could sponge them. Look at that. Oh, I love that. So that's mint macaron. And then the larger daisy image in gold. And here's an old olive with a pattern in gold. And then here's the paper that I'm using tonight. So that's not gold embossed, but just a nice monochromatic pattern and then another nice monochromatic pattern. And I actually kind of had an idea for coloring some of those in, to see how it looks. Okay, so here's my tip for choosing colors. When you are a little bit lost for how to choose colors, go to your designer series paper packs. And even if you don't have the paper that you want, but those, the colors in the paper packs sing to you, then you can just look in the catalog and see what colors are used in that color um, set. So this has Bumblebee, Early Espresso, Mint Macaron, Old Olive, Terracotta Tile, and Whisper White. So my background paper will be Whisper White. And then um, I'm going to use a, 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 no, a darker ink, a brown ink. Um, it won't be Early Espresso, it'll be Soft Suede, but those are coordinating uh, brown colors. And then Bumblebee, I don't have yet, so I can't use that. So I'm going to be using Mint Macaron and Old Olive Stampin' Blends. And I'm going to be using the Terracotta Tile Marker because I don't know if there is a Terracotta Tile Stampin' Blend. If there is, then I don't have it, okay? So you kind of pick out a prominent color. And then you want to use a um, coordinating color um, to a lesser degree. On another video, I'll I'll go into how we can choose those coordinating colors if we're not getting help from a designer series packet. Um, but the the pa the um, colors that are in the paper are going to be coordinating, so you can always um, get your get your coordination from the paper packs. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this folder right here. Uh, I think it's some kind of tile folder. And I'm sorry, I didn't check the name on that. So this is, see, it looks like ceiling tiles. Super cool. And 
this kind of reminded me of it. So I am going to ink up the inside, the flat side of my folder with soft suede. And my ink is probably gonna go past my paper and that is okay with me. Have any of you tried this technique before? All right, so I wanna get the big shot up here because I don't want to put that in my folder until I'm the last second when I know I'm ready. Okay, so I have my big shot platform. And I think that this is one of our old style um, folders. So I can use a regular pen for this. But what I'm gonna do is open this up. And then I, oh, I might need to turn it around. Okay, it's gonna go like this. And then very, let's see, I should lay this down. Because I don't want to wiggle this around. I want to put it down one time and be done with it. Okay. So like that. And close it carefully. And then grab a plate. We will find out soon if this is the old style or the new style. Because this will be too loose if it's the new style. Looks like it's the old style because that feels nice and tight. And then we're running it through. And there we go. So added some texture. Oh, I put the whole thing in there. I didn't really mean to do that. That's okay. Because, you know, I didn't really have a plan here anyway. So... So this just will rinse off under the sink that, and I can let that dry on there. It's no big deal. It will rinse right off when I get it underwater because of the Vermont Let me get that out of the way. And let's get started on coloring those die cuts. So those are gonna go on here like that. Okay, so they kind of get lost in what's going on there. So I am going to add color now to dress this up a little bit. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to do was these large flowers here. I'm going to color them solid with the marker. And then the flowers, that, these flowers are going to go on top of them. And I'm going to ink the edges. So let's start with inking the edges. I have my terracotta tile sponge dauber. Oh, I know, Jenny, isn't it? Okay, so I wanted to sponge these. So I'm gonna be kind of leaving a little bit of a white center in these flowers, but the background will be colored in solidly with the markers, okay? So one thing to remember that you don't have, I mean, it's great if you have all the supplies, but you don't have to have all of these supplies to start coloring your die cuts. I'm just giving you multiple ideas and you can use multiple um, techniques on the same die cut when you color them. I do, however, advise um, cutting them with our paper, with Stampin' Up! paper, because the color when it goes on our Whisper White color is going to be truer you're gonna, the image that you're putting down is what you're gonna be, it's gonna stay there. Um, this paper is designed for you to be the artist and not for the paper to change things on you later when it sinks in or, you know, bleeds. So what you do is what you're going to get both with stamping and any of the um, techniques that you're gonna do, like this sponging. Okay, so there's my flowers that I'm gonna be using on my card. And now I could watercolor these later on. Tonight I'm gonna to be watercoloring these, but for this 
one, I wanted to just color in my flowers solidly with the marker. Another way I could do this is I could cut another border with the terracotta tile paper and then there we go and then just snip them out and add them to the die just glue them straight on the die there we go and this one i haven't decided what i'm going to do with those lacy flowers if i'm going to leave them white um sponging them with soft suede might be an option maybe i'll let you guys tell me what i should do with them so i have two um in the green family markers here or blends that i want to use and i also have two different styles of leaves so i'm going to be using the um dark mint macaroon on these ferny leaves. I gotta say that I like coloring with the Stampin' Blends better than the markers. The markers definitely have their place, but when it comes to coloring, I really prefer the blends. I always get both. So I keep both in my stash of all of the colors. I love what happens with the Stampin' Blends. Okay. And then with the Old Olive, I'm going to come in here with the marker tip and just do those center lines. Sorry, I'm not watching your comments. Hi, Sherry. Thanks for joining me. And then picking no up. No sweat. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Siri thought I was talking to her and I wasn't. Uh... There we go. So any thoughts as to how I should deal with those lacy flowers yet, anybody? I will call this a leaf right there, a lacy leaf. Yep, Jenny, totally agree. There is nothing like stamping up cardstock. It is hands down the best paper. Okay. I'm gonna leave them white for now and see. Okay, so. I don't like the white edges that I'm seeing on these terracotta tile ones. So here's a tip for you. Turning your paper sideways and your marker sideways and kind of coming at that at sort of a 90 degree angle to ink the edges. So we're not seeing the white edges of those. Now, if I were, if I had taken the time to cut this out, of terracotta tile that would have taken care of it but then i would have gotten a solid terracotta tile and not this kind of distressed look that i was going for what i have decided though is i'm gonna ink the edges of these terracotta tile with the soft suede there we go Oh, it's looking pretty. Let's try it out. See how that's looking. It's getting there. It's getting there. Okay. So let's ink up a little bit of the soft suede. And let's see if we can get in here gently. Just do the edges of those flowers. I could do the edges of everything, couldn't I? And then that's probably going to help me make my decision about those white flowers. All right, we're doing it. Everything's getting it. 
everything's getting the soft suede edges. Yep, liking it, liking it, liking it. Okay, so what about if we do a little bit of sponging in the center of those? I like it. I think I like it. Okay. All right. So these are going to go on here. And the I played with this a little bit earlier. If you line up your dots, those just kind of fit on there nicely. And then these are going to have to be sponged, aren't they? Sure wish I had some, that bumblebee. I think a little bit of that bumblebee color would be nice in here. So maybe I should get down my Cajun, no, not Cajun craze. Um, I want to say more mustard, which is not the right color. That's a really old color. Can somebody help me out? My yellow. It's in the Regal's family. Those are going to go on there like that. So a lot of the cards that I make are fussy cards, take a lot of work, and I apologize for that. But I really kind of like the arts and crafts of doing cards as much as I like stamping. And I like to do simple cards too, but oh my goodness, give me some art supplies and I kind of go bonkers. All right, so what do you think? I think I like it. Let's see if I like it better over here more. Gets lost a little bit, but I think I'm okay with that. Because I think what I will do is I will raise those with small dimensionals and then I'll just have my greeting right there. I think I'm gonna get away on this card without even adding any bling or ribbon. Isn't that shocking? I wonder if I should add these over here next to my greeting. What do you think? Daffodil Delight, Crush Curry, that's it, yay! Thank you, you got it. Crush Curry, that's the one. Okay, so a little, maybe a little crushed curry in the center. Let's do it. Let's do. I think what I want in this is a chicken. Get this off my card. Oh yeah. Oh, I feel so brave tonight with my color combination. I don't usually do this many colors on a single card. Ugh. It doesn't look like that one has soft suede. Thank you, Jenny. So Jenny is uh she likes this crafty stuff too because i've seen her work and she's a true artist she has a real gift for multimedia jenny you should share your instagram handle in the thread in case people want to follow you and see some of your great work You're welcome. 
Just speaking the truth there, lady, speaking the truth. All right, so let's go ahead and get some small dimensionals. And finish this card up and get on to the next thing. All right, so I think I'm going to have to cut these. I think we're going to have to go even smaller. I'm going to grab my Teflon scissors. All right, so while I'm doing this tedious work, why don't you guys, there she goes, yeah, Soulful Stamper. So find that in the comments and go find her on Instagram. She's really great with um, mixed media. There's the word. Okay, so while I'm doing this tedious work. Let me just uh, tell you that this make and take, you know, obviously I'm not sending you all the colors, but I will send you this die and some flowers and a strip of this designer series paper and a white card um, in the mail when you place a $35 uh, order by Friday, by this Friday, using the hostess code WFQ nine WMND and it is in the details of this post. So you'll be able to find that and you just go to my um, website rosiescrapper.com and there's a shop now button where you can place your order. And of course, if you want to get the Ornate Garden. I need to find that other die set that goes with this set because it is stunning, stunning. The lace is just gorgeous. I need to play more with this suite of products. Boom. There we go. One more little piece. Okay, so our next stamp class, for those of you who have been coming to the virtual, virtual card class, the next one will be June 13th and 12th. And it will <coughs> be comprised of mostly new product. I am finally going to get my new order my pre-order tomorrow so I can start planning and designing with the new product from the new catalog. And uh, this is one of the cards that we'll be making. Obviously this is not new, but it's a fun black card with those bright flowers. So again, we're trying to stick with mostly just die cuts and punches so that we can all add our own. There we go, like that. I hope that I'm not gonna have to trim down those flowers, I mean those dimensionals, because that was kind of a pain. Okay, I'm being all cover it? Can I cover it? Can I do it? Yes, I think I did. Okay, I'm going to have to get in there with my snips and get that little piece off of there later. And then a little baby one here. I was trying to line them up, but forget that. It's kind of abstract anyway, isn't it? All right, let's add a little bit of yellow. Crushed curry. Oh, I like, I like like I think that turned out really good pretty 
I don't know if I like it on there or not. I'm gonna stick with it because that was kind of my plan, but I think it looks really pretty. Just plain, don't you? What do you think? Hi, Gina. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so I'm gonna go with more dimensionals on that. And then I'll trim the ends because you know if I don't know if you noticed, but oh, I'm gonna have to trim my dimensionals again, aren't I? Okay, let's see. Maybe I can go with small ones. Because if I was gonna put those right in the center, they were going to show. And I don't want my dimensionals to show. Okay, you guys watched any good shows lately? We have been watching the Marvel, the shows on Netflix. And now I think we're doing the uh, Shield Agents of the Shield, I think is the name of that. We try to go with shows with lots and lots of seasons. Okay, this one's gonna be hard, but I think I, I think I'll just have to trim a dimensional for this one. Oh golly, this is like watching paint dry, isn't it? Okay, so my original intention, just to share with you, my original intention was to not emboss on this part, to only emboss on this part, but that's not what happened and I'm gonna have to be okay with it, right? I suppose I could try it again. I think I was gonna, I need to plan it out a little more carefully, um, how I'm gonna get that paper in there with only a portion of it. I may just have to emboss just the designer series paper instead of the whole card. That might be what I have to do. Okay, I think I have enough on there. No, maybe not. I think I need another here and another here. Yes, so many do come in the package. They are so useful. I completely agree with you. And very little wasted space and the and the wasted space around the edges are really handy for when you're needing to add dimensionals to like a whole panel. So I just save them in a baggie and then I grab that baggie when I'm doing really large pieces. I use the edges of the dimensionals. Okay, I think I got them all off. Nope, one more. Okay, so this top one is what I'm gonna have to trim. I put a dimensional down there on that old olive piece. So that little flower, oh, I like it. And I think it needed that little bit of yellow. I think that's what it needed. Yeah. Okay, so let me grab a scratch sheet of Whisper White to stamp a, one of these little greetings on. Oh my goodness, I still have my hair tie on my wrist. Sorry about that. <laughs> I think I was gonna go with... <laughs> so here's a card. <laughs> That's so adorable. Mm, you're amazing. From all of us, my friend. So I'm gonna go with my friend because that's generic enough for me to use for anything. If I have to use it for, you know, a birthday or praying for you or um, sympathy, it'll work. All right, so I'm gonna stamp that in. 
this soft suede ink. And then I didn't grab a punch, but I'm going to grab a punch. Cute. Okay, so I think this is called the classic label punch. And I ran out of room, so grab a post-it. The handy dandy post-it comes in to play once again. So I just put a post-it on there and now my paper's long enough for me to hold it. And then always looking from the back and taking my time to line that up. Actually, I think I'll go I'll go this direction because I'll line that up on the side and probably trim it. So if you're wondering, like, how do I choose where to place this? Well, I'll just share something with you. The eye is naturally drawn to the positions um, on anything where it is divided into thirds. So like for this paper right here, if I fold that in thirds, and that was not a very good third fold. Should be more careful about this. Okay, this is gonna be closer. So fold it in thirds and then fold it in thirds again. And you can get to where you eyeball this. You can always make yourself a pattern out of vellum so that you can see exactly. But these locations here, where the thirds intersect, so if you're going across. Um, in the center is always is always fine. That always works. That that works visually. Um, but if you're not going in the center, then you want to stick to one of these third lines. And then if you're doing like a greeting or some embellishment or you know some sort of focal point, if you put it if you center it on where these thirds intersect, then it's going to be very visually pleasing. So that was just a real quick little lesson. Um, so this is, so thinking about this into thirds, about right there is where that would be. And so I'm going to go ahead and mount that up on conventionals. Now, with that having been said, if you break the rule, there's no card making police. And does it mean that it won't be? great and awesome. No, it will still be great and awesome if you don't follow the rules. But if you're feeling um, uncomfortable with what you're producing, then just kind of following some of these little artist rules can really up your game, so to speak. Okay. All right. So there we have that. And then I think I will tuck these little babies in there like that. So a little mono adhesive. Apparently this is quite on the verge of being gone. There we go. And then I need to lift this dimensional up a little because I want to tuck this down further. So like I said, I only had a rough plan when I began. So thanks for hanging in there with me and watching the design process, being a part of my thinking and my struggle. Ah. 
know if I want that up there like that one. Maybe here. Probably need a third. Creating triangles, um, visual triangles um, with three, like three um, embellishments, rhinestones, that kind of thing around your focal point is also another design tip. So I'm gonna go with that right there. And it's really hard for me to walk away from this and not do rhinestones. Okay, so what do you think guys? of the finished product project. I think I'm happy. I think that turned out better than I expected. Yay. Okay, so I need to straighten this up a little bit and get out the next project, which is a repeat so that those who got the make and takes um, know how to make them from the last live and I can't believe how long it's been since I've been live. I let too much time go by. All right, so this is one of the make and takes that you will receive. Let me show you the other make and takes that you will receive. They were in the, I think that I should send you this one. Now I won't be able to send you the stamped image, so you'll have to color your own stamped image, but you'll get the white card base and the black dye, um, that lacy black dye, and I'll send you three of those gold faceted dots. And then the other one I wanted to send you was this. So um, you will get this die, that paper, the white card, the white card that's been embossed with that lacy background, and then this black card with the melon mambo layer, um, and this die cut right here. And then you'll ha you'll have to do your own stamping and your own greeting. Okay. And if I have enough of those rhinestones, I will send you those as well. Okay. If you have any questions about that, please let me know. And we're going to be repeating the um, springtime cards. So I'm going to demonstrate how to color that and how to stamp that. And I used all of the colors that are retiring. These are all our retiring colors. Call Me Clover, Grapefruit Grove, Lovely Lipstick, Blueberry Bushel, and Pineapple Punch. And this is with the Abstract Impressions stamp set. So I'm going to start with this one. As a matter of fact, I probably don't need to do this one except for maybe just to show you how I created this because you should be able to, I'll, I'll post a picture of this, you should be able to do the stamping um, and maybe with a few instructions. I'll put that on my blog so that you have instructions for how to stamp so I don't have to stamp that again. But I'll show you how I put this little border together to um, put on your card. And then um, I do want to go ahead and show this again. So you grab some acrylic blocks because those are my acrylic blocks will be my palette. And I'm going to be watercoloring. I thought I saw an aqua pen here. There it is. So on my aqua painter, let me get some of these markers out of the way. So I need some paper to put that down on. Actually, I'll grab my silicone mat. And then I already cut with the springtime impressions die um, that corner. And notice that on the card, it is not in that shape. So I'm gonna show you how I cut that apart. So let's get started with the Call Me Clover leaves. So I'm just dipping my acrylic block into the Call Me Clover and then getting my aqua painter ready. I need a paper towel, don't I? Yes. For cleaning off my aqua painter. So 
there's water in this barrel. It just twists off and then you can watch the water coming down through the barrel and then you'll see that it's going to be into the brush at that point and then I stop squeezing. Now let's get some color on those leaves. So I believe that when I did this on my live, I might have been using pigment sprinkles and those are my favorite. I love, love them. So these colors are going to be a little bit more true to the Call Me Clover than you're going to see in my original sample. That is because um, those pigment sprinkles are like multicolored, multicolored watercolor crystals. They're stunning. They're absolutely stunning. Hey, Jenny, thanks. Thanks for letting me know. I'm so glad you were able to join in tonight. I don't know when you posted that. I am bad at looking at the comments. They're kind of over to my left. I should probably change that. Oh, there. Don't really want to paint my flowers green. So Sherry, if you are still watching, would you let me know that you're still watching? Okay, so when I take out the pineapple punch, I will be adding pineapple punch everywhere to just kind of give this green a little bit more dimension and depth without really changing the color. Okay, so I'm gonna clean up my mat so I don't start getting green on my flowers. And let's go ahead with the blueberry bushel next. So again, just dip my block into the blueberry bushel. Pick up a little color and I'm going to be doing the smaller flowers. Oh, that's going on nicely. I'm getting some nice variation of color there. So nobody has given me any tips on shows to watch. Is that because you don't watch shows? You're good scholarly people and you read books instead. Okay, almost there with the blueberry bushel. I'm going to miss this blue. Okay. Clean that up. Love my silicone rubber mat. This is a Stampin' Up product. Great for um, gluing things down. All right, let's get the lovely lipstick. Okay, so Sherry, you know this is for you, right? <laughs> and if you have any questions as I'm going, I will try to catch those in the comments, okay? So I'm using the lovely lipstick on the roses. I'm 
a little more water. Oh, that might have been too much. Let's see, what else can I tell you about? Oh, the gazebo in the back is finally being uh, designed into a outdoor kitchen. So I know that sounds kind of fancy and it's not as fancy as it sounds because it's a low budget situation, but it will be functional and fun. Hoping that all my siblings will be here in July and your kiddos. So we are trying to make that a really great out, outdoor space and yet with a lot of shade because we needed more shade next to the pool. So excited about it. So excited. Okay, I'm going to grab a larger block because I'm going to mix these colors this time. So first in the grapefruit grove and then in the Apple punch. Now you don't have to use these colors. You can use whatever colors you want. The card base that you got is blueberry bushel, so you will kind of try to, you know, do something coordinating with that. Um, Pacific point. So notice how I just mixed those together. So I am actually mixing together my pineapple punch and my grapefruit grove for this final flower in the center. Oh, kind of an orangey yellowy effect there. This is one of my favorite dyes. I'm sad to see it go and that gorgeous butterfly that is with it. But lots of really beautiful things coming. Okay. So I'm, I promised you to pick up some of that pineapple punch and put it on my leaves. See how that just made them kind of jump out? I love that. I'm also going to be adding a little bit of the pineapple punch to the blue and to the red. So I'm kind of going over everything with that pineapple punch to add some depth of color. See how that just makes it? Love that. Really random. Okay, let's come back in here with some more yellow. Sorry, pineapple punch. We have such fancy names, don't we? Okay. Let's try to get rid of these. Actually, what I should do is just put them face down on my paper towels so I don't bump into them and make a mess. So Sherry, it must be getting late where you are. Alrighty, so next step is to snip this apart place on my card back and I need paper snips. Okay, so I think that what I need to do is cut off this large rose here. And then these three blue flowers here. Okay. 
There we go. And then here's my piece of white, whisper white. So this will get glued down right there. And this will get glued down right here. And I'll just use my mono adhesive for that, this glue. And then this one I did right there like that. And I'm getting kind of tired. My eyes are getting kind of bleary. So I'm not going to make you watch me glue that down, but that's how that went. And then this is how the final card goes together. So I just stamped a greeting down here. Don't look at that because I didn't do that for you. Ah. And then um, I think I might have even added some rhinestones into your make and take packet to put in these three large orangey flowers. Um, then if you don't, if you're using colors other than the blueberry bushel and you want it to coordinate better, then, you know, use your own paper. You can use that for another project. Okay. So let me set that aside and I'll show you how I did that other piece. I'm not going to show the stamping, but I am going to show you how I built that. Okay. So I just took a piece of, um, copies. I'm pretty sure I included for you. And then I just went with this uh, long edge right here, okay? And I glued that, just glued it right down, okay? Let me show you. So I'm gonna use snail. There is ink on there. Yeah, before I cut that, I want to make sure that that's going to go all the way across. Yes, it is. Good. It is going to make it all the way across. Good. Okay, so just for the sake of showing you so that you can see how this works, because it's going to end up going on top of your stamped image, um, but I want you to be able to really see it clearly. So I'm going to show you how it would work on this blue card, okay? So first thing I want to do is trim this side off. And then, of course, it where I put it, I have a full rose there, so I could always color that rose and then use it maybe for the inside of my card, okay? So the inside of your card will be white, but if you painted that in the same way we just did, then you could add that to the inside. I think that would be very nice. I'm gonna add a little bit more adhesive like that. That is some big, bad, ugly hair right there. And then just lay this in position. Notice that I'm going for about that third mark again. Holy cow, that looks really pretty just on the blue. Ugh. A little more trimming right there. Check with my ruler, see if I'm getting that on there straight. Yep. Great. Okay, then turn that over. Snip, snips. So, again, if you have um, any questions about any of the products I've used, um, anything about Stampin' Up, please let me know. I will be posting this on YouTube for a replay. So if you are joining me on 
the replay on YouTube. I would love it if you would hit subscribe and notify so that you can be notified when I go live. And um, let's see, what else do you need to know? Oh, a thumbs up, a thumbs up for um, this video, either here or on YouTube. I would really appreciate it. So my computer is getting low on battery. That's bad, I didn't have that plugged in. Hi, Lori. You came in at the very, very end. So I was doing a replay of um, how to do some of the things on that um, make and take that I did on Facebook a couple weeks ago, and I'm just finishing up. So please let me know if you guys have any questions. Again, I really appreciate a thumbs up and a comment or even sharing the video, especially um, sharing it with somebody that you know would appreciate it, somebody who likes making cars or li likes arts and crafts, that kind of thing. So. Lori, I want you to tell me what you think I should do with this. I was just demonstrating how to put that together. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I put it on the wrong end. <laughs> um, there is no wrong end, right? I like that. All right. So if there are no other questions or comments, then I'm going to say good night. Thank you, everyone, for joining me tonight. And have a great Tuesday. Bye.